and I'm fine to just have the conversation go on the way it is. But I just had a couple of things. So I was going to talk today about um, about uh, uh, the initiative process there. So um, if you remember, we went to the Oregon Legislature.gov page mm -hmm. there, and then I'm going to go to the uh, Oregon Constitution, which is down, down, across, right there. So there's lots of initiatives out right now, and uh, so anyway. Falls amendments. Um, ah, this is going to be too hard because I can't really read it. Uh, uh, anyway, the the, um, the procedure for initiatives is all in the Constitution. So, um, uh, and you guys are experts now in how to look that up. You would know how, how to go. Get that. I so, got one that's talking about abolishing capital punishment. Are you killing me? <laughs> that would be capital punishment. Anyway, so 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 that, that was the so the Constitution has all that. So I don't need to go over over all of that there. Um, there we go. I, um, so the the so the only other thing that I really wanted to show you here. Is if, so if you go to uh, the Secretary of State's website, there's a lot of different ways to get there. I always go to OregonVotes.org, OregonVotes.gov, and then that gets you there. And then there's a thing, help me out here, does this say? File initiatives, referendums, and referrals. Is that it right there? Yep. Okay, so we click on that one there. And then um, this is kind of a cool thing that I think not many people know about. Be a chief petition, withdraw petition, search the... That's what I want to search the IR yeah. database. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, okay, so this, so what this is, is, so this says 2018 there, right? Yep. Okay, and I'm not going to fill anything in there. And does that say detailed there? It said elections division mm -hmm. home. No, I'm Some going results, to. detailed results go right there. Oh, and detailed results, right, right there. So, okay. okay. So, and then what this is, is this is every initiative that's live, right? Okay. So if you go right now, if, uh, if you look at it, so there's IP, this is IP1, right? This is Jimerson's thing for to stop taxpayer funding abortion. So IP1, and it tells all about it. And you can re read the complete title there and all kinds of stuff. And one thing that's cool is you can sign up for notifi a notificator on this um, thing. And so it will tell you when each one goes through a different milestone or whatever. And so these are the kind of uh, milestones here at, at the bottom here. And if when they get a certified ballot title and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, Anyway, this is kind of a useful thing, and if you scroll down, if you scroll down, it's just one after another. So Thomas many of these Madison have been uh, have been dropped. James right? Buchel. And so yeah, so James Buchel. Who's that guy? Who's the other guy? Who's the chief petitioner on this one? So uh, anyway, so this is IP five, which is still alive. You can go to the Polk County Fair tomorrow, and mm -hmm. you can sign it, and uh, um, it tells everything about it. There's then IP six is the next one. Which was, uh, I was, I think I was also a chief petitioner on that one. With Sal, yeah. Maybe not. Maybe, you know, and so this one, actually, this was one where the attorney general refused to issue a ballot title, right? Mm -hmm. um, so withdrawn by yeah, no chief certified petitioner. title found. Yeah. Uh, attorney general declines to prepare a ballot title there. So, and Oregon law says that when the secretary of state hands you a thousand signatures, you shall issue a ballot title. And the attorney general declined to issue a ballot title. So, so what's the recourse? So, uh, so you got to go to court. The, yeah, I could. We I, and I, I actually argued that to to sue the attorney general. Um, and part of the thing was is that so you say, well, that's going to be a lot of money. We already burned through a lot of daylight there. Um, we could just start again because probably that trial would conclude after the whole thing was done. So, um, so we decided to not sue. I, I would have liked to have sued. I think that there's that you have to you have to kind of say, look, on principle, you, you can't let the bully steal your lunch money. If you let yeah. the bully steal your lunch money, and you say, ah, well, I wasn't that hungry today, yeah, or power I need to drop money. a couple of pounds anyway, or something like that. The bully's going to be back every time to go get your lunch money. Right. So, so the so what's your other recourse? So, um, I went into the to the uh, Ways and Means hearing for the Department of Justice budget. And I went up there, and I said, I foamed at the mouth, and I said, 
No, we need to, to I went and I had, I had like a big poster made of a uh, half and half, half diet, half uh, lemonade. Half diet Coke, right? Half diet Coke. Man, that's just, that's a weird drink. But anyway, so, really I had a, so I had one of these uh, things where it was a, kind of a filibuster on the floor of the house there. So I had this, you know, you have to get permission to use a visual aid. You know, Madam Speaker, I'd like permission to use a visual aid. So I actually, I was going to smack down the Attorney General for two things. One was for this, and the other one was for um, the uh, ballot title that they gave us for English being the official language. Mm -hmm. And I don't you know if you saw that one, but that one was so weird and just dumb, whatever. And so I had that actual title just put on a thing. And so even when they first made the mock-up for it, it said, you know, uh, the title for IP5. I said, no, 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 don't put a headline on it. Just put the text. So there I am standing in front of this easel. Oh, Madam Speaker, permission to use a visual aid? Yeah, yeah. And then the sergeant at arms comes and puts your little thing up there. And that's all it is, is just the text of it, right? And, uh, and I'm blathering on about measure six, but not measure not, not that text for English being the official language. I'm blathering on, and everybody's looking at it, going, "What does this have to do with everything?" So it's kind of a little bit of a little bit of a dog and pony show, whatever. But that's that's the other recourse that you have is to is to threaten the attorney general's budget. And so so uh, these people are these people are political actors or political pigs. I don't know if you saw what happened. With uh, the Oregon Health Authority, did you did you guys follow what happened the, in the last couple of weeks, sir? Yeah. So the Oregon Health Authority is having a snit with one of the CCOs, with one of the community care organizations. I heard that on Friday. Well, I saw part of this. Yeah, and Friday so was on it's Mars. a little bit hard to follow. And so anyway, so well, the government doesn't really like this organization. That's kind of a government vendor, let's say, is a CCO, and it could be any vendor. It could be Knife River or whatever, something like that. This just happens to be a healthcare vendor. And so the government's got a snit with them. And so the government decides, oh, let's go find an AIDS patient or something like that that can have a complaint against this CCO, mm -hmm. and and let's embarrass them or whatever, and then we can, you know, we'll show them or whatever, something like that. Yeah. This is the government doing that. Well, they got caught doing it, and the agency director had to resign because of it. So these people are political animals, whatever. And this attorney general is one of the most political people in the whole zoo. And so, uh, so someday we're going to have a majority. And uh, I hope she's still attorney general when we have a majority in the uh, in the legislature, because uh, hopefully I'm, the house. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand up there and just cut her budget. <laughs> Forty percent is a start. Or anyway, so seven. so so the um, so that's that. So. Um, uh, so as far as like, uh, uh, I, um, I, I'm thinking I don't want to go through all a big presentation on everything on this, but um, but there, this is a, this is a way to, to find that out. So now there's there's several thresholds for uh, doing that. So when you do a, a referendum, and so in Oregon, the citizens have the right to veto any piece of legislation passed by the legislature, as long as it doesn't have an emergency yeah. clause on it. Yeah, anyway, the normal clause, you mean? The what? The normal clause? The, the normal clause, or the no clause. The clause Whatever. that you put on everything? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, they're getting better about it, though, because I think that there's people that are getting all indignant about it. Even some Democrats are getting indignant about it. Uh -huh. And so that's a good thing. Yeah, so, it seemed like there was Betsy Johnson went through a land base to them on some of this crap. And, and Betsy Open. Johnson's really a Republican and Democrat clothing. Even, that. even that. guys that are true Democrats, like David Gomberg, is, yeah. he's foams at the mouth. It's not really a partisan thing. It's environmental regulations, and we're going to move some transportation money over, and we're going to get the job done. And um, and that's okay, and you want yeah. us to do that. But we're, but when we need to replace the statue at Statuary Hall, we're not going to we're not going <laughs> to declare that an emergency. Hi, you guys. Hi. So um, uh, anyway, so so uh, um, uh, that's that's uh, uh, that's a uh, emergency clause thing. So uh, anyway, so if so to do a referendum, you need uh, it's like uh, so the, there's a formula for figuring out how many signatures you need, mm -hmm. and it's like it's based on the number of people that voted for governor in the last normal governor election or whatever, and there's a formula in the constitution. Yeah. So so uh, so that's a, the threshold for that is 58,000 signatures. So there's one active right now. It's IP 301, which is to um, repeal the health care tax. The individual mandate health care tax or individual plan health care tax. There's another one that might come up, and that's the uh, 
719 Alpha? Yeah. The, seven, is the, gun, the emergency restraint protective order? Yeah, it, uh, extreme risk protection order one. Right. So that one might happen, might not happen. And uh, I'm still, I've got a group together that's thinking about it and talking about it. Um, and so I think that that one, if he wanted me to just be frank with you, I think that there will be a petition circulating. But I think that the governor's going to run out much of the clock. And I think that that's not going to be all that. It's not. It's. It's. Gonna, well, we'll get a petition going, but I'm doubtful that it'll be successful. So, um, and I hate to, I hate to uh, talk that way about my own efforts, but I have. But the measure 88, I, I was mocking people for doing that, and uh, yet I was heavily involved in that. And I said, you're never going to get this on the ballot, and we ended up getting on the ballot. So anyway, so just because I mock something doesn't mean I'm not willing to work hard for it and uh, uh, try to get it done. So. Mm -hmm. So that's 58,000 signatures. The other thing is, is that the citizens of the state of Oregon can pass laws or repeal laws. And so right now there's a repeal one, which is IP22, which is repealing Oregon sanctuary law. And the text of the measure is ORS 182.820A or something like that is hereby repealed. That's the text of the measure there. And so um, that one, the, good, the cool thing about that is kind of hard for the Attorney General to get in there and do monkey business on your ballot title, right? So uh, anyway, so, uh, so that one, so we can repeal laws, we can create new laws. So like, for instance, um, uh, the IP5, which I'm also a, a, a co uh, chief petitioner for, is, um, uh, requires you to approve U.S. citizenship to vote in the state of Oregon. Oh, we're circulating some initiative petitions right now here. Yes, aren't we? I have Julie Parrish's uh, IP 301. Yep, IP yep. 301, and then I have uh, petition ID uh, number one. I already signed this one, I think. Yeah. We already have this one at our county meeting, didn't we? Now, some, yeah. some, some people will tell people that so if you double sign that they'll invalidate the whole sheet, which is not supposed to be true. No, that's not true. So, yeah. and so and actually, so what we used to say is, is uh, if you think you've already signed it, don't sign it again. I have the medical one. What's the other one? So if you think you've already signed it, don't sign it again. Now, it's illegal to sign a petition twice. So I don't know why, because they're going to go through and they're going to validate them, and they can find that you've signed it twice. And if you have, that doesn't really hurt anything, except it hurts the chief petitioner. But the, the advice that I would give you nowadays in the world of technology is that if, you've, if, you, if you're not sure if you've signed it, especially because some of these come through more than once, like... The, the one with, the, you're saying the Marilyn Shannon one, the, the taxpayer funding of abortion. Yes. This is his third try, I think, right? Possibly fourth. I think it's so. his third try. Yeah. And so um, he's, uh, he's on his third try. You might have signed number one and number two, and you haven't signed three. And so if you don't know, I, I'm going to, the advice that I'm going to give you is don't ever knowingly sign a petition twice, because that would be illegal. But if, you, yeah. if you're not sure, you can sign it twice. Or, or not, I, just, I just told you to do something illegal, and I'm not doing that. So um, you can sign. You can sign it. And you can uh, sign if you, it if you're not sure if you've signed it before. Yes, right. Yeah. That's because what I'm trying to say. You don't want to be unafraid to sign it. Thank you. Exactly. There's a lot of these that go around. A lot of there's yeah. a lot of older voters that are very important, and that sometimes their memory and stuff. Right? Yep. I wouldn't want to discourage anybody from signing something. Yep. If they're well, not sure I like if they the, have. I like to see. But they're going to validate all the signatures. I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. It a, makes it difficult on your. I got to pull out person. I'm trying to open up another browser. And I'm getting uh, updates. So it takes several minutes. Taxpayer funding. So, so the, the, the citizens of the state of Oregon can pass laws and repeal laws. So if they, so what if they do pass something that doesn't have an emergency or that has an emergency clause on it, right? So um, then you're screwed, aren't you? No, you're not screwed because you can always repeal that, right? So, but you just can't do it with a referendum. So you have to do it with so, an initiative. So, so if that's the case, you have to wait for the law to go into effect the following January before you can start repealing um, it. I'm not, I'm not sure when you can do that. Uh, so I think that as soon as the law, as soon as it becomes a law, and I don't think it has to go into effect. Oh, I think okay. it just so has the signature of the governor. Yeah. So once the governor signs it, I think you're okay. Huh. Um, so uh, let's see. I'm gonna go here and mm -hmm. 
enjoy this nice breathing weather. Uh, like it's supposed to be even worse tomorrow. Oh, there's a 70 degree weather. You know, I, I had yeah. thought I might go to Crater Lake in the near future. <laughs> and I looked up the weather and it says smoky. Yeah, Crater okay. Lake's got a fire up there by it. So. Okay. They did last year. I was up in, I was above Detroit up there by Elk Lake. So what this does is you, you scan all these petitions in and, they, and upload them to this, this thing here. So this is a tool that I, I do. And then if you're, if you're a worker at it, you just click on the next petition there. And so what that does is that brings up, and it's loading, loading, loading. Ding, ding, ding. Works, works faster when you're on a real internet connection, not not going through my phone here, but it takes a minute. Wait for it to go. I love it. I had. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, Mike, I'm sure other people have said this, but I, I really appreciate you doing these classes. Yeah, yeah. I learned a lot last yes, time. Good, good. I have I have some more queued up too. Okay. So stay tuned. Oh, yeah. Uh, Man, if I got my laptop, I need to put my polis on it so that way I'll dive right in. Okay, Ooh. so we've, we've all seen that before there. So one thing you want to notice on there is it ha says at the bottom, it says uh, sheet number, right? 15. Or, yeah, and so you don't ever want to fill that in. That's what the chief petitioner does. So if you fill that in, then you kind of screw with the chief petitioner. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of people will mail them back to me, and they'll put one on there or something yeah, like yeah, that. Or one, two, three or something. <laughs> Or no, they'll just put one mostly because they're like, oh, I got this petition. It's the one that I did. Oh, you're saying like if they had three if sheets. If they had three or, sheets. Yeah. yeah. So then, then what I got to do, so then I'm going to make that one like uh, 421 or something like that. Oh. Reuse the one that way. So that's my little clever thing that I do. I do. They usually will do it with a, a ballpoint pen. I always use a Sharpie to do that. So now, let me, I'll just do one here for you. And so what, what usually the way to do this, I hope this works out. I just can't read that here. Edition ID number five. No, so I'm going to read that, the guy's last name and his the number it's of Romero. His name. Romero? Is that mm -hmm. what it is? Romero. 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 And then what's that? What's that address number there? Like 405. Four, 405 or 408? 408 North East 143rd. So Ro Romero 405. That's what. That's all I need here. Mm -hmm. So I got his last name and I got the number of his address there. So I'm going to type in here, this is how this works, and you think it's 405, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Or 4025. Let me, let me, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to drag this over back to my computer here um, on my screen. I think I can read it and just, so, so I'm kind of cheating here. So it's, it's Rambo 108. So, uh, oh. <laughs> let me, let me what were we all here. off? Wow, I look like Rambo. <laughs> Well, hey, Ray Charles, cheap. They've been dead for 10 years. Hang on, hang on. I like this, though, because as a PC, can I get access to it as a PCP? Yep. Good deal. <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, so we were just, so uh, I was telling Bob earlier, so I'm going to be the keynote speaker at the uh, Deschutes County Republican Party, and we're going to talk about, um, so is Rambo 108, right? Yep. Last name is Rambo, who lives at an address that the number is 108. Richard right? E. Right or it actually there. starts with, and so it's, it's uh, everybody whose last name starts with Rambo and whose address says 108. So it could be Rambo 108 or Rambonicus 10835 or whatever. But uh, uh, anyway, and so this is Richard Rambo there. And so there's a Joanne Rambo, a Karen Rambo, and a Richard Rambo there. So it's the third guy, right? But there's so, no John. What? But there's no John. No, no, it's, it, that's who it is, Richard. Sure. Yeah. So, so that was pretty easy, huh? And now we'll look at this. Watch. So now I click on, I click on that there, and now, so now he's filled in there on the first one there, right? And so, so uh, it's got his voter ID number there, and it's uh, Richard Rambo, his voter ID number, and it's a status of match. So if you can't find the guy. Then you put skip, or if it sometimes you get petitions with blank lines on them, and you put blank on there and stuff. So that's how they do it, and then you can run a duplicate thing. So, wait, so now let's say Richard Rambo uh, goes and signs that petition again because he's not sure if he signed it, right? So I'm going to find the two petitions. So one of them is page 15, and the other one's 4,312, right? And so I'm going to take one of those and just I'm, me as the chief petitioner, I'm going to line that out. So it's not it's not fatal to have somebody actually sign twice, even though 
it's a violation of the law to knowingly sign a license. Know so sure. if the chief petitioner goes through and, sure. and can double check these, then when it goes to the Secretary of State office mm -hmm. and they double check the signatures, it doesn't count against them because it, it shows that they checked it? Right. No, so the or Secretary of State will not get a duplicate because I won't let a duplicate go to the Secretary oh, of State. Okay. okay. So now, so possibly what could happen is is I have Richard Rambo, who signs here, and then he signs a couple months later, but he's, you know, holding the clipboard weird, and he wants to get in to go eat hot dogs at the fair, so he's not printing very well. Signature. And so we, we put a skip on that one, at, because we can't identify who it is. So the Secretary of State, they can go through and they can look multiple times, and they have the advantage of seeing his signature on file oh, that I don't have. Yeah. So they might get a double match there, where I wouldn't, but it's going to be pretty rare. But Most of the time, people are just signing the same way they would sign. It's discouraging when you think you got them all, like on with Przanski recall or something, and then they. Well, they, and and that's the disenfranchisement that they did, and I think that they wanted to make sure that that didn't go through, and so they made sure they disqualified enough signatures. So I think that so, and this is this is a good point that I, I think that we had a horrendous thing where they were like, uh uh uh, and you need a date. And the date format doesn't really matter, as long as it's an intelligible format. Now there's some, like in Canada, they use, a, they, like ours is, you know, when you do the numerical thing, right. you do um, month, month day, day, year. And the rest of the world almost does. Does day, day month, month, year. Mm -hmm. Now if you're in, if the day is, is uh, 28 or something like that, there's no month 28. But if you're in the days 1 to 12, it's not clear or whatever. So, uh, but anyway, if you put it, if you put an intelligible date format in there, so if you write out April 14th, they have 2.7 million registered voters in the state of Oregon. They're not going to go look and say on a quest to see, here's this scritchy scratch of some guy's signature. Let's go see if we can match that. So they're not going to do that. But if so, so effectively, you really have to put your name. The whole address thing doesn't matter, and sometimes people will put kind of a partial address there. If you're gathering signatures, you always want to encourage people to do it by the book or whatever. Let's make things easier for the Secretary of State to match them. But really, what you really just need is, is the legal requirement is to have a signature and a date. The name would be kind of pretty important. It's going to be kind of hard to float it without. I mean, some people's signature looks like they're printing or whatever. And uh, so anyway, so that's what you need to do that. If you're So if you're a circulator, which, which is what we have here, somebody who's circulating, and so uh, what you're required to do is you're required to witness every signature that's done. And so what you can't do, and uh, um, it's tempting sometimes, is just say, hey, here's a clipboard, and just pass it around the table or whatever, something like that. And you're not really supposed to do that, and so you try to avoid, avoid doing that. So I do have a question on that. You can't just put it online either? Because I'll well, get to that in a second. Yeah. Yeah. I have the, the medical tax one waiting at home to sign a bunch of people this weekend. Nice. Um, if I'm the, the signature gatherer and I'm going to sign the bottom, can I sign? Yes, you can. Yep. Okay. Yep, and, and I've done that. Now, here's a hint. This is, this is what I do. Is you notice what people do is that is it's monkey see, monkey do. And people will follow the columns, and they'll follow the dates, and they'll follow the formats, and they'll do that. Now, so if somebody is a good behavior guy on the first line, and you know who's the best behavior guy in the world? It's me. It's because I do this all the time, and so I know how to sign it to make sure that you, you're going to be number two guy signing it, you're going to sign it perfectly, because you're going to imitate me, and I'm perfect, and I'm even better than perfect. But anyway, um, so, um, so, what I'm, so if you ever look at Mike Nierman, he's always the first guy to sign it. I always send him the first guy. I never get the last sign or anything like that, because I always want to set an example. And I always tell my wife, too. I get my wife trained, too. Yeah, so there's, go get the wife trained. I already trained. do that already. So you're perfect, that's pretty too. Awesome. And then here's the thing, too. When you get some guy who's a misbehavior guy, and I think that's what happened here. And they here. sign on the bottom line or like in a random line, and you're like, oh. Yeah, or somebody does something weird or something like that. That's fine. That sheet's done. And you don't have to, you don't have to put an X through it or anything like that. Just say, that's it. That sheet's done. And you pull it out, and you start a fresh sheet. The cost per page for that piece of paper is pretty low. The cost per signature, so now you're not allowed to pay signature gatherers per signature, but you can say, we had paid signature gatherers, and we paid them X amount of dollars, and they got Y amount of signatures, and you can take X and Y and divide it out, and you can figure out what the cost per signature was. And the cost per signature is in the ballpark of about $4 a signature. 
So when you're talking about like how valuable those signatures are based on how valuable the piece of paper is or something, if the piece of paper starts to go awry, pull it out and just start a fresh one there. When you're halfway at the end of the day of the uh, Gooberville County Fair or something like that, and that date there is 522 or something like that, and, then, and so don't start that sheet the next morning because the next guy is going to put 522 on that there. So just pull in that sheet, start a new sheet, whatever. So when, if it went in doubt, start a new sheet, whatever. So this is like good tips you just for had to one of those. The date is back in April. That's okay. The starting date is back in April. Yeah, so you can have an April date there and then an August date there. That's okay. That's legitimate. But that just seems like you're just asking for trouble and monkey business, and I'm just not going to do that. So, and, and if somebody, say opposition or something, sees that and they're like, oh, geez, oh, he's gathering a lot of signatures. Look how, you know, look how, how, uh, how apathetic, got apathetic that is or whatever. And uh, so you really don't, I mean, it doesn't hurt to just start a new signature for the day and make it. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I, I always say, uh, when you have sheets that are completed, or like th this one where you say, there's monkey business, so I'm gonna, I'm taking that sheet and I'm, yeah. whatever. Cool. I get them off site there, because signatures are like, signature sheets are magnets for snow cone juice, and, uh, oh, yeah. and uh, right, right. insect mm -hmm. damage, and uh, whatever, and Dog. getting lost, and uh, yeah. I, I needed a piece of paper to write my mother-in-law's phone number on, or whatever, something like that, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 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 uh, it, get get those off site, get them to the circulator, get them in the right. safe yeah, location. Anyway, so so that that's how it works. That's how that's how we do the signature authentication like that. If you're interested in doing that to be a volunteer, uh, I can set you up with that. We got we saw it in that first page there. We got a gazillion of them there, and we can put more in there. So um, so there's lots of opportunities to do that. Th that's one thing people say. Oh, what can I what can I do to help? You know. To win my country back or whatever. This is something kind of small that you can do, and uh, it's kind of cool because there's things that you can do that are hard, like knocking on people's doors and telling them to vote for Donald Trump. Not everybody has the stomach to do that, you know. And so I get that. So whatever. But uh, this is something that's kind of a, a doable thing here. So um, then the other thing that happens when you do this is this data gets collected there. So people like me, I collect data. I was talking to Bob about that. I was trying to. Calm Bob down because because uh, uh, he's worried about the government getting his information all kind of stuff. The government gets all these sheets. The government has that. Yeah. So what you really want is you want you want Mike Nearman to get it because Mike Nearman's one of the good guys and uh, he will uh, he'll uh, um, use it for to for the, the non dark side. Wasn't there an initiative to uh, oh, what was this a year or two ago? An initiative um, one county one state to uh, take away that uh, the voter info bill be here. Oh, you're um, talking about what happened in the legislative session. That's uh, why. I, what am I thinking of? You, uh, what you're thinking about what Julie said. So it's like a sad. voter privacy thing where they won't, don't want to give you a, a... This is my pitch for data privacy here. Is So I got Safeway club card, and I go to Safeway, and I buy like a thing of butter or something like that. And from time to time, I go to Safeway and I buy butter or whatever, something like that. So after a while, Safeway knows, hey, this German guy, he doesn't buy margarine. He buys butter, right? And so now the thing about Safeway is, so Safeway's got all this da data on me, right? And they can link that up to my email and they can and they can uh, link it up to yes, my address. Safeway club card, baby. Yeah. The what? That cheap gas. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, and, they, and they know how much but gas I get. They have a now, profile on what your preferences are. Yep, and, and then they can sell that data on the so. Yeah. And so, and it's the same thing too about if you're on the internet and you're looking for riding lawnmowers, and now the only thing that pops up for ads is ads for riding lawnmowers. So they just don't know I bought one last week, but uh, but now I'm still getting the ads. Whatever. But anyway, so people get alarmed and startled about that. It's and super annoying when you get engaged. I just have to say that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> huh. You're you, just you know, inundated just with all of this. Crap. You know, my, my wife. So my my daughter. And I'm she's not, not super into a lot of that, so it's yeah. just like all over. But my, my, my daughter has a serious boyfriend or whatever, and uh, my wife is starting to get these wedding planner things all kinds of So anyway, and so I yeah. think what they, they know, <laughs> they, they, go. They, go to, they go to Facebook, they know, they know that, uh, that these guys have been boyfriend and girlfriend for a long time, 
and then they so they know that the, my my daughter and her boyfriend. They may have even started are, to show him engagement ads beforehand to make yeah. him feel like he needed to well, work. So now, so, now like so here's the thing is the, the cool <laughs> the, the cool thing <laughs> is is so when Safeway has my information, the cool thing is is Safeway doesn't have an army and Safeway doesn't have a police force and Safeway doesn't have the ability to pass onerous legislation requiring me to, to do things. Safeway can send me coupons for butter if they want, or not send me coupons for margarine, or not send me coupons for uh, um, you know, I don't know other other things that I don't want. So so uh, anyway, so that's that's the cool thing about that. So now it, no, just leave it there. Just that, that's that things. It used to be one of those roller pull down things, and it broke a long time ago. And I think I probably broke it myself. But, no. but anyway, so um, so so that's the that's the good thing. Now the problem is. What happens when, so like in Google gets a bunch of data about you and your preferences and all that kind of stuff. Well, what's the problem when, the problem is when Google gets in bed with the Obama administration and that's a problem. So what we need to do is we need to pass um, laws on data privacy that restrict government from getting your information. But not so much the private sector because the private sector is going to behave benignly with that. It's the same thing. Walmart is no threat to me whatsoever. They were voluntarily participating. Yeah, I, I don't have to do business with Walmart. I, if I don't like Walmart, I don't have to do business well, with them. them they can send me coupons. I can throw them in the garbage or whatever. If I like Walmart, I can do that. I can go there as much as I want or as little as I want. So they don't they're have subject, yeah, they're subject to the free market. If they exactly. That That's data. a feature of the marketplace yeah. is that, that there's no data. coercion in there. <laughs> is that nobody has <laughs> a gun in your head. And so, so that's, it's different with government. And so, what, so like for instance, they have a thing, I know the city of Salem Police Department uses this, is they have uh, cameras on their police cruisers that scan license plates, and then they collect that data. And, um, and I believe this is true, and I'll, I'll be corrected if not, but that data goes to a third party there, and the city of Salem, even though they're the ones that are involved in the collection of the data, has to subpoena that data from the third party organization. That's the right way to do it, is to say, we think Ben Fisher committed a crime, and we want to know where he was on Wednesday night. And so the police cruiser got him turning into Eola Inn there. By the way, um, all you guys are certified now to uh, land planes on aircraft carriers. If you've got your car successfully in this parking lot, yeah, it's no. essentially the same thing. So uh, <laughs> anyway, so um, from this direction. But anyway, so um, uh, anyway, so to have the, the, uh, the entity that cares about the data, the police department collects the data, but they don't get to sit on the data, and they don't get to look at the data unless they, they go through the Subpoena whole Fourth and Fifth Amendment uh, process. Data. Yeah. yeah, so that, that's the proper way to, to do it. And, and Safeway can collect all the data they want on you. It's voluntarily. You don't have to get the club card. If you don't get the club card, you don't get to pay the normal price. They call it the sale price. It's really the normal price. You get to pay the inflated price of, you know, five dollars and eighty nine cents for a mango or something like that. Yeah, they so, got me there. Yeah. 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 So, for a discount. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, because it's it's voluntary. And and then not, not only not only that, because not only that, but Safeway is going to provide you with a service because they're gonna they're gonna offer you things based on what they know. And so you're not gonna get ads for feminine hygiene projects. Or <laughs> margarine. Yeah, or margarine, yeah. Because you don't you don't do that. You don't get that stuff and so that you, they won't bother you with that. They're only gonna bother you with stuff that you care about there. And so but uh yeah. all right so uh so anyway so now so I'm going back about down like four layers, right? So we had a, a referendum, then we had a regular old initiative and an initiative could repeal a law or make a new law there. And the signature level for that is 88,000. Um, then the next thing is to amend the Constitution. Only the people can amend the Constitution. The legislature can't amend the Constitution. The legislature can write up an amendment to the Constitution and pass a resolution that puts it on the ballot, but the people will, will end up doing that. Is that what so, we, is that's what's happened in January, Steele? No, th no. They that, didn't push that through where they want to go through and change? That's all just legislation. There's no constitutional amendment there. So. Um, so, uh, and that was just the legislature changing the process for and Instead of for Supreme Court justice right. determining the definition of an initiative, 
they wanted to bring him back. Remember, Drew Parrish was laying them down with like a sword, right. cutting dragon's heads. It is. It I is. love it. It, it, it is. It's 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 a. Uh, I voted against yeah. that. It was a it was a bad thing. It's the legislature trying to game the election system in its own favor. Oh, there. They're so that, away. So that didn't fail then. No, it passed. So uh, so if 301 gets enough signatures, I believe it'll be on the ballot in January, yeah. not in November. The problem is, is if you do a referendum on something. The law, the, not the law, I spoke wrongly there, the act gets put on hold until the people vote on it. So you have 90 days to put it on, to collect the signatures. Once you collect the signatures, then it does not become law until it jumps through all the hoops. And one so of them that is, wasn't a constitutional amendment. No, it wasn't constitutional. Oh, it's, just, okay. it's just legislation. So, but, the, but let, me, let me clarify on that one more bit. The problem I have with it is we already have a process. To bring it back into the Marble Nut House on State Street, on Court Street, and give it to your phobic committees. Who's going to be in charge of me? The, the ruling party. And they get to choose who in the hell they want. Oh, we're going to get, we're going to have five people on the committee. And they put twice as many seats in their own party. Exactly. On there. So, yeah. so it's kind of a little that's bit of a... Barbara Streisand yeah. from hell. So if you've got a good initiative, they can go through and just... No, 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 no. no. It's, just, it's, just, it's just for the, the health care one and I think one other one. And their, their argument is that... Um, that we need to we need to start collecting this tax as soon as possible. So we need to decide whatever. And so if this does make the ballot, we need to, to have the election right away. That's their argument. Mm -hmm. I, I don't buy it either. I think they're trying to game the system, whatever. I think the, the funny thing is, I think if we get it on the ballot, I think it's going to lose. I think people are going to see repeal a, a tax increase, and people are going to say, you had me at repeal tax increase, and they're not going to really. There's not going to be much. You're, you got to sell it to Joe Six Pack, and that's understand. a pretty easy bumper oh, sticker, yeah, you know. Um, so, um, I so hear the work doing good. It's a crunch time frame. It, it is. So it's, it's a very difficult time frame. I was involved in the Measure 88 one. Oh gosh, we're that, 20 that days in or something. There? Yeah. Or something, I think. So, so 20 days in, and you're about 25 percent on the signatures, I think. So, I think so. And, yeah, and, and do th those are the ones that are validated. Yeah, so now what happens is there's a whole bunch of signatures. That are there's sheets out there floating around in La La Land that are all signed and that Parrish doesn't know about yet. yet. Yeah. So the Gooberville County yes. Republican Party is circulating those and and they're not in yet. So uh, how, how long do we have? To get? Ninety days. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ninety okay. days plus. Right. It's, it's ninety saying. days from the end of the session. And the governor actually signed that during the session. So that was like I'm going to say it's like ninety eight days or something like that oh, okay. is the total time. So. Um, Anyway, so, so that's that. So we have a referendum, that's 301, 58,000 signatures. We have a plain old initiative, we're just repealing or creating a law, and that's about 88,000 signatures. We have a constitutional amendment, that's uh, IP5 or IP1 is also a constitutional change there. That IP1 is going gonna, is gonna to pass this time, and that's going to be very cool. It's going to be very cool watching the rats scamper. So uh, IP1 is the uh, you know, taxpayer funding of abortion. So right now, it's already against federal law. The what? It's already against federal law. The Hyde it's, Amendment. Well, yeah, the Hyde Amendment says that no federal funds can be used for abortion. Oh, okay, this says no state funds. So now, I don't know, what are you going to do? They're going to have your county... I, I guess you could do, well, I don't know what, the, what it says, how they're it stuck after that. Okay. So, yeah, I think they're pretty they're much gonna stuck. They're going to have to go to private, yeah. paying for things like the rest of us. Or, or have like a, well, just, county. Have, no, 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 because I, I can't imagine, Jimerson, it's probably any entity within the state. So you, you make a state law that covers all county, city, water district, school district, whatever, something like that. So I think you're not going to have any funding of abortions anywhere by any public entity. Okay. So you're going to have to go and do fundraisers to... Whatever. And, and good luck with that, whatever. Anyway, um, so it, it's going to be very cool, especially these are the, these are the creeps who just passed the, uh, um, uh, every health care plan has to have an abortion yeah. in it. Lobby, and, uh, lobby, and, and oh, violation. by the way, Providence can't do that because they're a Catholic so we'll program. Cut them. And so we'll cut them out. But then if you have Providence and you need an abortion, we got this separate government fund here just to make sure, whatever. And it's almost like, like they've gone so far it's like that. the next step is, the only possible next step is, you know, if you want to have an abortion, we'll pay you for that. We'll give you, here's a, here's a Starbucks gift card if you get an abortion. That's, like that's going to be the next step. It's so ugly. Their um, overly aggressive agenda, I'm hoping, and there's some good signs out there, is finally rousing the sleeping giant. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hope so. I'm yeah, hoping. Like this, I think that this, I think well, that this. But, but like the last two elections, my, my concern is, is this. This was probably the best time to have a damn government, best time to have our top offices. Portland and Eugene voting was down. Yeah, but... But we couldn't get... 
from here. Oregon yeah. six, seven years behind the rest. Of the You're talking about in the 2016 election. Yeah. What I'm saying is overall is this, and this is where I feel when I go to this fall meeting over here with my man here, and a couple of people sit at, and bend, I think we got to dress to get back and go to our roles as a PCP and have it and get those people go walk through the neighborhood, figure out why they didn't vote, get them back on the ride. And say we will have our people, we will have our crap together, and mm -hmm. make it happen. Please stand with us, at least give us a 75 percent chance. Yep. If we had a 72 percent chance east of the mountain and south from here, and we, need the PCP we, we would have had the votes yeah. to replace and, everybody. That we and need. so part, part of that is the, the whole the whole data, that. data collection yeah. thing. That's what so we know that people that signed that initiative. So so. um, anyway, okay. So we had uh, so let's go through to a referendum 58,000 initiative 88,000. Constitutional amendment, yeah, 117 or 118 or something like that. And then the next, the threshold up is to recall a statewide official. And so we have one of those going on right now, that's recall Kate Brown. And that one you need, I think it's like 212,000. So that's a big whopper of a... He's aiming for 250. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a quarter of a billion signatures there. So that's, that's, uh, that's about one... one Sixteenth of the state of Oregon. That's one out of every sixteen. A lot of liberals people. you got to convince. Or, or just and you know, a lot of liberals that don't I, like I think Brown I think too. one out one out of sixteen Oregonians would sign that petition. Don't but it. the problem is getting to them. Yep. That that's what the problem is. Is sticking a clipboard in their face and and then getting them to take the the twenty eight seconds it takes to I sign. I think it's a great <coughs> idea. I just think the timing is all off yeah. because yeah. It, it doesn't agree. work out. It I just don't want people to get burned out. Her for her next campaign. I figure oh, no, 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 make no, her no. spend money for that, and if she's still running, no, not to make her spend it. Because no. the, the fact is, she's already got Bloomberg money, Soros money, out of Sweden money. I would rather have, have her spend that. that. But she's, she's already, already she's, she's, she's out of so focus herself. She's not even talking no, about state issues. Yep. She's going off about Trump all the time. I, I think she's going to kill her. I think the issue will be the number presence of The presence of the recall damages her, I think. Just because it focuses things on, huh, I agree. Should, where should we recall her? And there that, that is, just to ask the questions. So. Yeah. yeah, and I just don't want people to get burnt out on it. But I yeah. mean, if well, they're burnt out right now. The people I yeah. talk to right now in this valley, the biggest problem they're saying is they feel like they're getting squeezed in their pocketbooks. They're getting squeezed by people begging for money. They're getting squeezed by everybody that wants to want to pay for the so, health care while they have to, while they're going around people get and with the decriminalization of drugs, we know that the crime rate will go up like Seattle like it did two years ago. And it's up fifteen to thirty percent. People can't the they're, they're well, getting pushed. Will, will the recall effort actually happen before election time to re elect her? Or to get rid of if they get the signatures, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure when that election happens. It may happen at primary. So she's going to be on the ballot in tw in November 2018. Yeah, she's going to be on the ballot in another year and a half. Yeah. You, or yeah, less. Which, which the, that's so why the that's recall why makes question, very. The it's not the most put, effective. Yeah, yeah use that's what, such uh, a and I actually question that. And so do several people. I, I talk with totally. a very large group every Monday of extremely conservative. More senior people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so what, what same, you, same, we, we're at a unanimous agreement. Why would you spend the effort that could be better used elsewhere to do a recall when you can vote her out? Because if you can't vote her out, you sure as hell aren't going to get enough signature for a recall. No, I, I, I still think you, that just the, the fact well, of well, the recall. I, I, I feel the same way. So, although I did yeah, sign the recall. And, and you know, another thing I'd say on that. Just then this is I'm speaking tactics now, so I'm I'm no more of an expert than anybody else at the table. Um, you know, including you, but uh, um, but I I think there's always all of the above because you just never know. So I'll, I'll relate a little story to you. So um, I'm on the board of directors for Oregonians for Immigration Reform, and we were having a conversation about whether or not to uh, have this um, IP22 to recall the or to repeal the sanctuary state, and the and the conversation was like, well, how we can't afford this, you know, whatever. And I said. No, because once you get going, you never know if the money's going to show up. And they said, well, how are we going to market this and all this kind of stuff? And how are we going to do this? I said, you know, you don't, you don't ask those questions. You kind of, you, 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 start the, you start the movement and you build the movement, whatever. You can't say, I want a guaranteed movement at the end, whatever. And so what happened was, so we, we had some contentious arguments and we voted barely to, to try to put it on the ballot. And... What happened was, is that um, we got the guy who was deported 20 times in Portland who 
broke yeah. into the elderly woman's house and raped her and stuff like that. And, and then Sheriff Mike Reese from Multnomah County comes out and says, well, the reason I had to let the guy out is due to state law, right? And so we have now this poster that has um, <laughs> Sergio Martinez on one side and Mike Reese on the other side and says, you know, ra you know ra raped a woman, let out by Mike Reese. And Mike Reese saying, I had to let the guy out. He, state law requires me to do that. And, that at the, and at the bottom it says, sign the petition. <laughs> and so uh, anyway, and so, and then, uh, then we had, uh, there's an organization called, uh, um, it's called Numbers USA, and uh, they have a grant for political activities. And we wrote, they give out, they have $10,000, which isn't a huge amount of money. They have $10,000 to give out across the entire United States or whatever. Well, we wrote a grant proposal and asked for the entire $10,000, which is excessively greedy on our part. And we were granted it, so they gave us $10,000. So, um, Why not? So, 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 then, so, so the thing is, is... It's kind of like, um, you know, now, and things could have changed the other way or something like that. So Trump could have gone all mushy-wishy on immigration, and then that would have hurt us, and, and we might have not gotten the grant. And so there's all sorts of things that could have happened that would have hurt us. <clears throat> so I almost think that um, when it comes to politics, and you know, it's the same thing like me when I ran for office, and I didn't think I was going to win or whatever. But you just say, no, I'm going to keep my foot on the accelerator, <laughs> you know, whatever, and... And things happen, and sometimes not every time things happen, but sometimes things happen. Well, I understand the psychology also of having a uh, a recall just before an election because that definitely it opens up some cans of worms that the other side has to answer to. Yep, that, I think and that's, then, the, I that's the most that, important. My thing. question actually is: Would a recall happen before the election? Yes, yes it will. When, I, and I not, think it'll happen in what May. What would that be on? That yeah, probably oh, in May primary. Yeah, yeah probably in the May yeah. primary. It, the, the thing is, it, uh, to me, and this is just me talking to and. And uh, I've been wrong before. I've been wrong on my own things before. So, uh, but um, I is uh, I, I don't think this is going to be successful. So I don't even, I don't even get to the point where I'm asking what ballot it'll be on. So I just don't know the answer to that question. Yeah. And, and that, but I think that 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 the effort in itself is stirring up enough dirt to um, to be useful. It's bringing so out if, voters. And I got to tell you one thing. I got, so I was at the Hood River County Fair, and and they had we had IP5 and IP22 there. So IP5 is the uh, uh, got to prove U.S. citizenship to vote. IP22 is um, uh, repeals Oregon sanctuary law, and people are and people are walking by and they're like ho hum, ho hum, or something like that. And I said, you know what we need is we need re recall Kate Brown. And so we got, we got a piece of poster board and wrote recall Kate Brown, sign the petition here. And we went on the internet and <laughs> printed off some things that recall Kate Brown and put it under there. And all of a sudden, people are at the table. And while you're here, why don't you sign number five and number twenty-two? So, uh, like it's the candy, I catch it's the candy bowl effect, right? Yeah. It's like you can put a bowl of Snickers out, or you can put recall Kate Brown out. It's the same effect. I just know that those people that that go for that don't get discouraged after they see it fail to get. The you, you know what? I, I have to tell you. So I've, I've worked on more failing projects than successful projects, and um, and I don't have anybody come to me and say. Oh man, here you guys go again. Another one of your initiatives. Uh, I'm not signing this one because the last 38 that I signed failed. Or uh, I don't I get ever keeper types like that. Except yeah. when I was running in Washington County, those keepers I would get those. Yeah. Oh. The problem is I, I don't, in the I don't city. Get those people. It seemed to happen in the city. I, I'm an optimistic guy, though. I just, yeah. I just smile. So, so I, I got a question. Mm -hmm. If recall petition successful, they get it on the primary, and we recall it. Does that mean in November our incumbent will be Dennis Richardson? That's right. Yes. I, I, as far as I know, that's so. That's when, when somebody gets recalled, right. there's a there's a vacancy created, and then there's a procedure for vacancy. So right. if you recall me, there is no Secretary of State of House District 23, and so they have a recall. They have a vacancy procedure. And for the governor, the vacancy procedure is to put the Secretary of State in. Okay. And so yeah. And, who's, and who, how, how do they appoint the new? Just like the, the new governor, who was Secretary of State yesterday, he appoints the new Secretary of State. How about that? And yeah, it could be you, Ben. <laughs> could be you. That's could could be Julie Parrish. Could be Julie Parrish. Yeah, uh, that, she would probably well, be the front well, There's area. some really, uh, there's some good candidates out there. Yeah, there's there's the, there's ample Republican. The biggest. Okay. Yeah. Well, so. nevertheless. So um, uh, anyway, so uh, now so one other thing I got to say so. 
the, the founding fathers, when I say the founding fathers, I mean the founding fathers of the United States, and then I also mean the founding fathers of Oregon. Um, that, of them, but... So the, both of them wrote into their constitutions uh, the, the ability to remove judges. So in federal law, the way you remove judges is you impeach them. And so that's a function of Congress, and the Senate and the House do that. In Oregon, the way that you remove judges is you recall them. And so for statewide judges, it's... Um, it's a, it's a, it's the same threshold. It's the 211,000 signatures there. Hard to do. That's a tough threshold to reach. But for circuit judges, it's a lot, it's a lot easier to do. And I think that the founders of both Oregon and the United States, I think they intended that judges wouldn't get recalled very often, and I think that they would not be okay with doing that a lot. But ne nevertheless, they did put that in there. And so, um, so there's a standard in, in uh, to recall the president. It's for um, uh, bribery, treason, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. Did I get that right? Yes. You students of the Constitution? Mm -hmm. So that's the standard to impeach the President of the United States. For Supreme Court justices, they hold their office during times of good behavior. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of an elusive statement. I don't, there's not, what does that mean, good behavior? Like, like, um, I'm it's a Supreme Tuesday. Court justice, and when someone cuts me off on the freeway, I don't give them the middle finger. You know, is that is that good behavior? So I, I don't know what good behavior is. What I think what I think judicial good behavior it's is arbitrary term. No, I, no, I don't think it's an arbitrary term. I think I want to narrow it down. I want to define it. I think to, for judicial offices, what's good behavior is to apply the Constitution. I.e., not this living document stuff. Not as, as, the, right. as Black's Law, as our founding fathers have exactly. derived from that, that their is, laws. That is good behavior. And then, and then we, can, we can have legitimate arguments. We can say, oh, no, 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 I'm applying the Constitution here. And you say, no, 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 but you're not applying the Constitution correctly. You're applying it here, right? And we can have arguments like that. And honest people can have arguments like that. Or we can say, oh, no, the Constitution says that. But the Constitution is a living document, and the right thing to do is to do over here and to say that, oh, transgender people but that's get the, the get well, special well, right to it. But there's no recall except and, by Congress on our circuit court judges, it, Except right? for, no, uh, no, wait, so uh, the way that you remove a federal judge, any federal judge, from so from pre Supreme Court to a to a, just a federal judge um, or a appellate judge or uh, the circuit. circuit court, whatever, mm -hmm. that, um, to remove those, you have to you have to impeach them, whatever. Yeah. To remove a uh, Oregon judge, you have to do a recall effort. And so, um, I, I wish that I wish that both procedures were used more frequently. To, and I wish that we would say that judge is not behaving appropriately. There, there is. I don't think there's a standard for Oregon judges. There's no nowhere where it says if a judge does X, he should be recalled. It, for federal judges, it's they hold their office in during times of good behavior. And for the president, it's bribery, treason, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. So there's no standard for Oregon judges. So I would say that when we get judges that fail to apply the Constitution or apply the law appropriately, that we, would, we, should, repeat, we should recall them. And I wish that that was used more often. And not just, I don't like the decision that you handed down or whatever. I had a land dispute with Pickering, and I don't and he won, and I'm pissed, and I'm going to recall the judge. <laughs> Not that, but uh, um, but just when you say when when we have these uh, large sweeping issues and and they're not adjudicated properly, then we need to say, well, we need to take out that judge. And I think that needs to be one of our options in our list of toolkits. There it so. should be a regular. Well, I don't know how easy it would be to uh, to get DeFazio to buy into the idea of impeaching. Judges Brown and Navarro. How in the hell can they have a judge go through, and they're going to have a separate hearing outside from the jury, and before they let they're, you they're in, that there is just that is no different yeah. than what they do in China. And, right, and so so uh, yeah. you're, you're talking about the, the Bundy thing. Yes, and so that's I, and I, so I think that uh, in, in that case there you have a, you have a judge who's misbehaving, and so he should not hold his office during times of misbehavior, and so that. Uh, that would be something. How many innocent people going to be prosecuted for and they're going to be sitting and rotting in jail and not giving information to the jury? Yeah. Equally, justice. Yeah. If you're not going to let a witness in, you better have. You're not going to be able to let them work out a constitution 
looked a certain way this time. Why don't you say we have a Jim Crow court going on down there in damn Georgia? Or why don't we just have the judge just think it up and get it? You know? Yeah. So uh, that's made what we got. Anyway, so um, I think that's uh, that's about all I got to say. And so uh, we can just we now so now we can just go off into whatever. So that's just, I just want to open up the cage match to whatever. So uh, just the tail end of that. We, we still do not have a method to impeach the governor here in Oregon, is that correct? Right, yeah. yes. How about that? Huh? We can recall the governor, but we can't impeach right. the governor. Right. So, the, so the idea of impeachment there, I think... I um, mean that you, you guys would... Right, so we, and, and uh, that would be like, so that would be a case where uh, um, it'd be a trial, so if, if we modeled it over the on the U.S. Constitution thing, the House would vote to impeach the governor, and then the Senate would conduct so a trial. Basically, basically she so, gets off the hook no matter what. So, uh, no, 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 uh, no, cause, uh, but I think that that would only happen if there was, uh, if there was some sort of really kind of um, crime or some sort of really bad thing, not just bad policy or whatever. So yeah, it have uh, to be, well, we, there's other states that do have the ability. Like in to California, they were called Great so Davis. I have gifts for everybody. This is the, oh, this is a, it's the Declaration of Independence, the oh. Constitution of the United States, and the really yeah. valuable thing is it's got the Oregon Constitution yeah. in it. Oh. Yes. Although, it's... The Oregon Constitution has been changed since this, but uh, oh, yeah. not very much. So, uh, anyway, look, everybody call me out. Yes, they're from, they're from the Freedom Foundation. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you. I, um, and I love the Freedom Foundation. Oh, yeah, they're great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll from my dad's. We had a couple there. of shirts from them. They're great. Yeah. And I'll get one for you, too. Yeah. So, anyway, so that's like a little thank you gift for everything. Yeah, thank so, you. now, now uh, we've still got more time, so uh, oh, so I'm please, happy to be peppered with questions. the one I got from the Boy Scouts. My question is. On to a short session. I know that we have a budget board that may be doing a little power tripping beforehand for the next legislative short session coming in. You're talking about the e board? E board, yes. What, I what, don't know what power tripping they're going to do. Well, the thing is this what we're sitting at fiscally, I mean, with all these so called. <coughs> we say we're raising money by not paying for Sal Esquivel's earmarks. <laughs> That's true. That's three and a half million dollars. That's true. But he, and that money's gonna go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna gut and stuff it somewhere else. But it's four million dollars, roughly. You're gonna yeah. bribe somebody else with that money. My question would be: Is where we're sitting at? At the end of the, I think, with their increase in the highway funds, what's the tax going to be on it? How much more registration going to go up? That's since you're on the transportation committee. Mm -hmm. You want me to give you the number of how much are going to go up? Yeah. Oh, that, um, well, no, it's it about, says like $14. Yeah, it's about 25% or something like that. So, okay. Um, so, um, I'm unhappy with it at all. And then the, uh, the, uh, what's the gas tax four, going up? Is that, that's 10, 10 cents over three by any or something like that. 10 yeah. cents over six like years. That. So, now, I got to tell you, so the, here's the thing. So, um, uh, so my thing is, I, I have no appetite for hardly any tax increase. I think I voted for one tax increase. During my entire time there, not even the bike tax. The what? Not even the bike tax. No, I, I, don't, I don't even like that. But <laughs> I, I, I laugh at that one the same way I, I get know, the, I get I the justice of it. But um, and and I would love to watch the lefties go That's nuts. Not but but uh, but I, I voted for one tax. It was that the um, the uh, the the Department of Aviation wanted or we tax aviation fuel one cent a gallon. They wanted to go up to two cents a gallon because they could pave more runways. And the aviators actually wanted the tax because they wanted their runways well, paid. No problem with so, that. Yeah. So that's so. Um, so and even that one, I I had to kind of look away and not make eye contact and just press the yes button. Yeah. But, uh, but but anyway. You and uh, Resky and Post they were the three runners up for Doctor No this last time. Yeah, around. yeah. So, but uh, um, anyway, so um, so uh, yeah, I think I came in third on that. So, but um, anyway. Um, but the, so, the, but here's the deal with the with the gas tax and all that. So if you look at how much is how much is all all of the transportation tax is going to cost you, including the bike tax there. And so if you look at like how much gas you buy, even living in a rural place and all that kind of stuff, it's probably going to cost you probably at most maybe like two hundred dollars a year or something like that. More. So, no, 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 no. It's it'd be, it'd be hard to get to two hundred dollars a year. So it's um, drive a lot. It, it, if if you drive a super huge amount or whatever. But um, but even then, it kind of gets dwarfed in your entire fuel bill, whatever. So um, uh, it's so uh, it's not that onerous. The problem I have with that tax is not so much the amount of the tax or the burden of the tax. It's the fact that that you know um, you haven't you haven't cleaned up your 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 last 
thing that you did. You know, you, um, you, 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 you filled up the ashtray on your car, and now you want a new car. I'm saying, no, go empty the ashtray on your car. So you got to, we, need, we need some fiscal discipline, especially in ODOT, before I have any appetite for doing any taxes there. Well, okay, so. it's just, ODOT just closed down Banks Parade during the eclipse. You know, Banks salt off the side up. Yeah, there's sure there'll be a few people trying to travel through Banks, but they can go around some other little roads over there. There's plenty of little roads around. There. I didn't know that. I didn't know that ODOT closed Just earlier today. today, yeah, ODOT. Yeah, it came out like yesterday, I think. <laughs> so, so uh, but the, that's kind of, kind of that's, that's not really a fiscal decision, though. I mean, that's kind of a, uh, like, probably more like a safety or a, Traffic mobility decision, or so something. Like that. It they might be, it road. might be a dumb decision, but, but that, but I, so that, that kind of decision, I'm happy to let ODOT make that decision and maybe get it wrong or whatever. But sure. New topic. Uh, had a friend of mine come to you with an airport. Yeah, issue, yeah. And uh, you referred him on to Mark Callahan. Mm -hmm. What do you think Mark's chances are? Um, so, so Callahan um, hasn't shown a lot of ability to raise funds. And that's so. I think that 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 hurts him in a congressional race. There, he had some negative articles again come out since he ran again too. So, yeah. so the, the, I think um, yeah. I, so. I think that uh, that uh, he's a really active a, guy. I almost wish he'd, he'd step into another kind of role or something. But yeah, yeah, and, and not not as an elected official. I think I think Callahan likes to run for office, and uh, yeah. so uh, he likes whatever. The and, and we need we need people to run, even in offices that I think they're Mark not. Mark would be an excellent candidate. I, I've watched Mark grow over what now six, seven, eight years that he's been perennially running, which I've done myself. I finally gave it up after ten campaigns. Uh, but <clears throat> Mark is being faulted for running. But the point is, if you get to know Mark, Mark would make an excellent senator or an excellent legislator. Uh, or any position he would get, he would be 100% in and 100% Republican. Conservative. Yeah. I, I think the biggest problem, what you're addressing, and I, th and I addressed it a little bit at the <coughs> state convention, is that, say, Alan Allen, he can go play on a golf course. I need five thousand dollars for this, or ten thousand dollars, or fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. Nobody is running the state in any office, as we've seen, unless you're Dallas Lithicum, who lives out in Lake County, that knows the ranchers and farmers and got something happening. Was able to get elected from the ground up. Even if we took the PCPs like myself, Ben, you, or anybody else, and we do a ground a grassroots campaign and try to gin up 65, 70 percent of our base. We can't get 52% in this county. How in the hell are we going to raise money? So uh, Even if we got $5, out $10 a person, if they don't donate a dollar. What, one, of the, one of the other City things, too, when Callahan runs, so you're, you're seeing this right now in the gubernatorial race there, is so you have uh, um, Newt Bueller and Lori Dreamer have kind of announced, Bueller officially and Dreamer not so much officially, they're, they're both kind of uh, lefty, moderate kind of people or whatever. And so you don't have anybody on the right pulling them to the right, keeping them honest. And I think that's a function that Callahan can do is when, so when you have, like, during the, the primary or something like that, and you have the panel of seven Republicans that are running or something like that, he's the guy that can keep, can keep pulling that discussion to the right. So, so there's some value in that, too. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so that's true. That's true. Um, Tim Lucier, have you ever worked with him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, we've been brainstorming a lot, and we're going to do a fundraiser for Terry Greer and, and some other Republicans. Oh, good, yeah. up, I think. So I'm a huge Terry Greer fan. So. Yeah, she's yeah. really yeah. efficient, isn't she? She's yeah. awesome. Uh, uh, is there an answer for Mark Callahan? Is there an answer to, is there a way to, I know, I know in my heart the man would make a great representative of the people of this state. Is there a way to boost him? So I, you know what I think? I think he needs to take a decade off, and then and let his name kind of clear a little bit, and then he needs to start from uh, uh, board of directors of the local mosquito control district and mm -hmm. chomp his way up. Mm -hmm. I th running for U.S. Senate is not not a good place to start, or for Congress or whatever. He so could have he, a lot of success and a lot of things. That yeah, he, if if he kind of started smaller, whatever. And uh, and that that would that would be better. 
he kind of needs to, to take some time off, I think, though, to kind of let his name clear. Because right now, he's the, let's phrase this, I don't want to I don't want to be mean to him or anything like that, he's the goofy Republican who yep. can get nominated but can't win kind of thing, and and the, the guy, there's the guy with the red tie and the Constitution in his pocket, you know, that, that kind of caricature of that's it. That's who I want to vote for. I know, I, mean, I do too. That's why I want an office too. But, and, uh, well, that's kind of who I am. You know, but, what, yeah, I mean, he's the red been time. on food stamps just a couple of years ago. Right. Yeah. Well, he got I those. fought like hell to put it, I'm still fighting like hell to put as many years between when I had to take welfare and, and now. And, uh, and it's I a lift up. Thought, we so didn't yeah, go through and abuse it. I think yeah. the problem is the right, message. Well, he just needs to wait a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you a good one that I got hit with my last campaign for uh, county commissioner, mm -hmm. which I ran a pretty decent campaign and garnered a decent amount of votes, was uh, my house has got a sex offender star on it. I'm not a sex offender. My house has a sex offender star because I rent to a sex offender. And the address happens to be the same as mine. And I had a couple of people in the party brought me aside and said, you might as well never run again because you'll never get elected now that it's out. Even though I made it very clear at one get together with the voters that it was not me. And it was like, where do you want him, living next door to you? Or you can have him living out in the countryside with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's trying to do the right thing. And yeah. Do well, he's a brother. He's a brother, and you try to uplift and challenge. The problem I see that we got to do, and I'm going to, matter of fact, this fall, I'm going to go to my people that I'm PCP. In. I want to know why the hell they won't vote. I want to know what can we do to give them a vote. I want to be able to get my base in my precinct up to ninety percent. That's a that's a dream wish from hell. I agree. But it's got to start there. Same thing with every, in every one of these Republicans. This what should be the main ingredient we should be start talking over in the fall meeting. So I, 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 like, I like where you're going with that. The only thing I'd say is I'd say that um, don't work your precinct. Because that's the, 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 the reason that we have precincts, a precinct is an administrative district for a county clerk to, to run elections. Other than that, it doesn't have any meaning. But so the fact that it's your precinct, it's not, I, just, I, it's not just but, like my But here, here's the deal is, so but but I, I use I, that energy, I can use that energy, and I can go across this mountain and say, if I take him, if I take him, and we go through, we meet our fellow brethren all day, let's do a canvas on the January, let's do a canvas in the February, let's do a canvas on the Paris and get the farmers ranch. Let's get like-minded people and see who's, yeah. why they won't yeah. vote, take a compass of it. So what if I, and what then if we I, bring it back to the party. What if I use data and I said, here's a whole bunch of people who didn't vote in the last election, who I've identified will respond to someone who's wearing a hat like you and has a mouth like yours or something like that, yeah. and say, "Here's a list, whatever." And so, not your precinct, but something where the, I don't the, the, the data is. I'm going to need a lot of help here. Uh, Gordon is yes. yes. <laughs> a friend of mine, and yeah. <coughs> he's, uh, he's uh, prioritizing I want it some more districts people. in Marion County yes. for precincts in, for, in Marion County for me next. Yeah. To do some walking because I tend yeah. to be walking. His his, his they're, they're uh. Their system is very sophisticated. And I've used it in Washington County. I was a PCP house captain over there. And, oh, yeah. and we got yeah, yeah, done. Your voting went up. Huh? You voted, you know, the number of people voting in over there went yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Well, we Washington worked in some areas pretty hard. And we, we uh, worked on Roy Rogers' campaign. And we were also with Keepers. Trump and, uh, and the, keepers. Thing, the thing is this. Keepers. Now you're running in 22, though, right? Yes. Yeah. So I, I, got, I got some uh, theories about 22 that yeah. you might want to try out. And uh, I'd be yeah. happy to help you with some data there and stuff. Yeah. So there, there, so one thing I think I think I talked about this before is there's the PCUN mafia that you need to at least Northwest know that that exists. PCUN. What, yeah. What's that stand for? That's short for Northwest Planning uh, Planners. Yeah. Pinero C Company, Sino C, yeah. whatever. Unes, like Unes, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Unidos. Unidos is the U, <laughs> but, but it's PCUN, and it's the it's the Union of Farm Workers, <laughs> and. Uh, they run a little bit of a mafia out there, and you really need to talk to Patty Milne about what went on with her right, on that. Right, yeah. So, so, um, th th yeah. so, I sent her a friend request, and she has not responded. I'm very into social media, and some well, people aren't. Yeah, she, she's a little bit older, so she's a, the I age that's not going to. What gonna business respond. is she in again? What, well, I think she's retired now. She used oh, to be she, a Marion County Commissioner, though. So, uh, oh, okay. And she used to be the representative from House District 22. So, oh, um, I didn't know she had one. Yeah. So, um, so, uh, she, so, uh, but uh, P so PCUN 
the, the um, anybody, any business that wants to support the Republican or whatever, they go and they threaten their kneecaps and stuff like that. So, uh, so there, so I mean, there's that heavy handedness there. I lived in so, Texas. I don't care. <laughs> so good. That's good. Oh, that's yeah, good place. Yeah, so I, I think, County. I think the best uh, thing to San do. San Antonio, actually. Oh, so I think uh, the best thing to do in there, there is to let PCUN yeah. go yeah. off on you. And then and and get some stuff on video oh, yeah. and put and and put that out there and then and then and dare the media to to do the right yeah, thing yeah, and, exactly. and shame those guys. Yeah. So, but but you have to know that they exist and you have to know what you're up against there. That, that thing. Yeah. The the thing that's good about House District 22 is of all 60 uh, House districts, it's got the lowest registration. And uh, part of that is, so um, I lived in Mexico for a while, and in Mexico. You don't do politics like you don't just go and register to vote in Mexico and then just vote for the guy who you think should win. Like Pickering, going to vote for Mark Callahan. You don't do that in Mexico because the, the the because the the winner of the election is already known. It's they have the ruling party there. It's the Pan Party. Yeah. Where it's it's broken down a little bit since then, but uh, but it's PRI. kind of still in place. But yeah, yeah. Actually, you're right. Pan was the. Uh, Opposition party, it's yeah. Partido Revolucionario yeah. Institucional or whatever. So uh, anyway, it was the PRI party that ruled Mexico for over 100 years, and still kind of rules them. And so if you if you go and you register to vote in Mexico, what you're saying is I'm a priesta, and I I want to get involved in politics because I want to get involved with the ruling party, like like the common term kind of thing. thing. Although they're not communists, but um, kind of kind of like that. And so. When when uh, when Mexicans come to America and the, the and there's like this thing, hey, you should register to vote. That's like saying, hey, you you should become an SEIU member or something like that. You know, if if I came to you and said, hey, how would you like to sign up to be an SEIU member? You'd say, well, I don't work for a government union or I don't I don't have any need for that or whatever. Mm -hmm. They say, oh no, you do. And so so if you if you register to vote in Mexico and you actively vote. What that means is that you're a priest a wannabe. So, so that's why the registration is down. And um, so, uh, there's some there's some possibilities there for uh, to, to to change things. But uh, anyway, that's that's well, it's an interesting district there. I have. Uh, do you know the Boss Arts? No. The Boss Art Trucking. Um, <coughs> yeah. Shelley Davis, I guess is her name now. I grew up with her. Stan Boss Art, my dad's best friend. He's ready to, they, to donate to my campaign. And I have a few other people ready to donate too. I just, I've been tossing around the day. I've been, uh, the idea, and I've been telling people that I'm not sure. And I am pretty sure. Although I'm going to be involved in some other statewide things here coming up too. Oh, yeah. So we need a candidate for House District 22. And yeah. so, you, so you should talk to uh, Matt Geiger and Kathy Lacombe. They've been the, okay. the, the two previous um, runner ups in that okay. district before. And uh, I, I, I know them a little bit both. I could help you connect with them. But, uh, and then Patty Mellon's the other one, obviously. And just talk to them about what their experience was or whatever. And I think the other thing that, that I think is a possibility in that district is, and I think I've explained this before to this group, it's the concept of interleaving, right? So like in, in my district, in my district, pot is not a big deal. So just people are, they're pro-pod or anti-pod, whatever, but it just resembles the state of Oregon. And so I can come up to anybody that's in my district and I can say, the chances of you being pro-pod or anti-pod are this much, and you're going to be this much emotional about it or whatever, something like that. So uh, in Carl Wilson's district, Carl Wilson is in uh, Josephine County there. In his district, you either really love pot because you grow it and smoke it, or you really hate pot because your neighbor grows it and smokes it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so you have this huge polarization. And you feel like ruining your economy because... Or, or saving your economy, yeah, however you look exactly. at it. And so, so, so you have this huge polarization on yeah. pot. In my district, you just have, you know, it's kind of a, more of a conservative district, so I can... Because nobody's, I, like, growing the shit out of it right. next to each other. Right. I'm and actually, so, I would be pro... I'm small government, and I just, I, I don't think they have any... Yeah. So, so that's fine. Pot's not really an issue in 22. The reason I bring that up because it's not an issue in 22. You now, in, piss off your neighbor, in, in, tw in 22, in 22, the issue that so pot doesn't interleave in in 22. It's it's right. it, it behaves 
the way you would expect, and people aren't overly emotional about it. And you have some people pro and some people con. But you don't have some people pro and some people con! Which yeah, is yeah. hilarious Spikes because the city of Woodburn has an ordinance against pop. Actually, I don't know what... Yeah. It's so okay. In the city ordinances. But, but anyway, but, but anyway, the, the, that issue doesn't inter interleave there. You have pros and cons. Now, what issue does interleave there is illegal immigration, and everybody yeah, else has said has said, oh, illegal immigration, hands off, get off that issue, because because th that's a big issue there. But here's what the deal is: is you have one guy who's an illegal immigrant, and or who he's not an illegal immigrant. He's uh, Mexican formerly Mexican national, now maybe U.S. citizen, naturalized U.S. citizen, but he's got cousins and nephews and uncles. First whatever. cousins. And, yeah, and all this kind of stuff. Second and, cousins. And, and they're in the country, and they're illegally here, and so he's very much pro. Now, he lives next door to a guy who's, getting, who's subject to the nephews and all this kind of stuff, who's subject to some of the bad effects of illegal the immigration. Mess. And the 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 so now you have interleaving. Now, what, the way that you exploit, so the way that you, that, that you deal with that strategy before is you say, I'm Matt Geiger and I'm not going near that. And I'm Kathy LeCompte Hold and you. I'm not going near that. And I'm Patty Milne and I'm not going near that. But the way that you actually exploit that, that interleaved is you, is you find the people. Can people read first? You, so I, however you feel about illegal immigration, I hope you get the right answer. Um, and you and you go to people who also are with you, and they will be passionate supporters of yours. Right. They'll give you money. They won't just vote for you. They'll give you money, and they'll tell their neighbors to vote for you. So because of that. Now, in my district, in 23, what's the interleaved thing in my district? Do you have any guesses? I have an interleaved issue. It's not pot. It's not illegal immigration. Right? It's something where, where half the people are passionate, where, where neighbor versus neighbor, right? What, what issue is interleaved in my district? Oh, gosh. It's public employees, right? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so, so there, you're a public employee, and you have PERS, and you also have the Cadillac health care plan, and you also get Martin Luther King Jr. birthday off, and Martin Luther King Jr.'s dog's birthday off, and Martin Luther King's birthday's And any dogs, bank holiday I choose. And, yeah, and any bank holiday, and plus the gover <laughs> extra governor's oh, day time. off, whatever. Yeah. And every time you get a holiday, you go and brag to your neighbor, Ben. And Ben gets a little bit pissed about that because you also have a nicer boat than Ben. And uh, so, and then, and you're going to retire at age 56 or whatever. And Ben's a little jealous about that because he's 57. He still works. And so, uh, whatever. Anyway, that's the interleaved in my district there. Now, if I can find Ben and I just put a mailer in front of Ben and say, "They're Nearman working for government accountability and trying to limit the power of the of the greedy public." I had a lot of young kids that was Hispanic. Some of these kids came up to me and said, well, we, we came across the border league. Some one of them, a couple of them was in college. Mm -hmm. And they asked me, what you, you know, are you going to kick us all? Is Trump going to kick everybody else? I says, no. I think the best answer to go with, and this is what I felt, I says, are you not breaking any laws? Are you trying to better yourself? Are you trying to empower yourself and be an asset? You speak my language, that we told them to you're not violating anything. Yeah, stay away from those government offices, kid. And I says, yeah. they're not going to waste time with you. You're the ones that possibly may be on a dream plan. Yeah. Does it mean I appreciate pulling on it? No. But at the same time, I would rather have ten of you that's going to contribute to my economy yeah. than the ones that wants to go through and take your sister and use them for a uh, sex trafficking yeah. trade yeah. or use them for drugs. Right. You're exactly right. I think that's the winning issue if you're in this situation yeah. of a minority community. You don't, you don't have to go through. I'm say and be hard. Say, yeah, I'm out. I'm for immigration. Yeah. Kick everybody out. No, and, and I think the I, answer I, will I be that too. is it's comprehensive. A it's a comprehensive two for it plan. Is number one, if you've been here, you ain't have no give us no problems. It's not, we're not going to ship your butt back to Mexico. There's too many of you to do that. But but the reason we're not going to ship your butt back to Mexico is. Not because it's not the right thing to do, because it, it would be the right thing to do, because we believe in the rule of law. The yes. reason we're not going to do it is just because it's not practical. It's, it's not real, fysically practical. It's really easy. Well, it's really it's really easy. Really yeah. you, you, you go to all the companies and you say, if you've got somebody who doesn't have a valid social security number working for you, you don't get to claim them on your tax rolls. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> all you do. That's it. And we Problem could have solved. some legitimate right. rules. There you go. Jim Sasson's bill. I mean, that, so that, the real ID, the real ID, yeah.
But, but if they they'd self deport if they couldn't work here. Yeah, yeah that, that, would be the, that would be and the And then they come the back legally after their, their wage. You know, well, really, if we just took away the free goodies, oh, we'll give you insurance, we'll give you everything. $37 million yeah. a month. I mean, that's, you that's, your, that's your two plans right there. Okay. I mean, that, that, that would, would work. be the yeah. easiest way. Now, and the, the cool thing about, about Bob's thing <laughs> is that it, it doesn't. you're not actually targeting a person. Right. You're, you're targeting a company and saying, you know, and, and you're not even targeting the company. You're say, targeting you, you can hire illegal aliens if you want. Right. You just can't. They, they go. They go you to the bottom line, not right. the top line. You don't yeah. get a tax break. And maybe for maybe for, uh, yeah. for farming, maybe there needs to be some correctly ran uh, migrant worker programs. Yeah. Or well, you, know, you know, I so I, I deal with the uh, I deal with agriculture for a lot because that's big yeah. in my district. And so and and so I kind of have a little bit of a of a friction point. On them with my thing on illegal immigration, but you know what I say to them, and I and I think I usually win them over with this, as I say, um, you know, um, I am very much supportive of your n need to have a ready, available source of cheap labor, and I said, and I will take responsibility for you not having that because, as the government, and I mean not me personally, but uh, as the government, we have your ready, available source of cheap labor. We're giving it welfare, and it's sitting on the couch yeah. watching Oprah yes. Winfrey. You and they have a big free TV. And, yeah. and you grab a better car, and you grab right. a cat at kettle. Uh, mm -hmm. That's great. And people think Mike is mean because he says, okay, guess what? It, um, you, so uh, you, you're not working. Either you're not working, you're getting unemployment, or you're getting welfare, or something like that. Well, do you know how to use the Internet? Because if you know how to use the Internet, people make money on the Internet. And so if you know how to use the Internet, you're not disabled from working, and you're not whatever, something like that. And so guess what? We're going to take the internet away from you. Oh, you don't want the internet taken away from you. Okay, we'll give you the internet back, but we're not giving you welfare then. Because that means, because the internet's a tool to make money. And then, okay, stop, stop there. Okay, now, guess what? Oh, you drive a car, don't you? Well, you know what? I used to, I used to be a taxi cab driver, so I know. And it's even easier now with Uber and all that kind of stuff. And say, if you've got a car, you can make money. And uh, that's how you make money. And so if you, uh, I'm taking your driver's license away from you. Oh, you don't want me to take your driver's license. Okay, no welfare for you. The welfare is just building up the house and cars, just like the rest of the inflation. you got to look at who you're talking to. You're talking to people who were making $25, $30 an hour without an education to run boards through a sawmill, make marks on lumber. Mm -hmm. Job skilled but unskilled individuals. Yeah. And I made $25 an hour, I'm not going to go work for 10 So instead, I'd rather sit on the couch and draw welfare yeah. than go to work for 10 yeah. And that's the majority of the ones, I, the able workers that I come across mm -hmm. are ones who had high-dollar, non-technical labor yeah. jobs and like you that said, went away. They, they, have, they have job skills, but not technical skills. Right. So they, they, they know how to show up to work, they know how to go there and do what they're told and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. They just don't have welding skills or, mm -hmm. or anything like that. But, but so to that, although I say we, we, um, we, we have these people in our society and government needs to get them off of the, the uh, get them off the train, get, get them off the train. So, I've, I've got to run and I, uh, because I don't, I didn't bring my clear glasses with me and I don't put my home in sunglasses. Uh, I got one more thing I want to bring up and that's the potential accuracy of a, of a, of a small sampling. 20 individuals, all 65 or more, 100% gun ownership, a lot of guns in most cases, uh, extremely conservative, <coughs> very anti-abortion, uh, very small government uh, oriented, mm -hmm. yet in discussing it over the last several years, but recently very heavily, because I'm getting the same answers, less than one-fourth of them vote. They refuse to vote because politicians, including myself, mm -hmm. are all crooks. Yep. We're, We're all liars. Yeah. We can't be trusted. Yeah. And there's no reason to vote because you're going to come and take my guns anyway. You're going to come and tax my property. You're going to come and make me pay the, the, the forestry tax to fight fires in the forest. And well, we're going to vote for you, and then you're not going to repeal Obamacare. And so I don't yeah. blame them for that. But, but how accurate is that? Yep. Uh, it know? is. It gets yeah, even worse not, when, when, you sit, when you're dealing with people that are that are uh, very committed Christians too, because the the, the grease factor is is multiplied with them. They're Christians. They're with the Lord. They're the righteous people. And for them to get mixed with the ugly, greasy politicians is really egregious. And so it gets even worse. What I'm saying is that an accurate thing that that many that large percentage no, you're probably of the over, over ultra conservatives are not 
Yeah. Or is it just that group? No, no, no. Uh, my, my Adrian Shoe. In yeah. mid thirties, you bet. I'm there's 50. there's a, a wide variety of them no. that. But, but, the, but you're just parents. talking about mid-30s people. He's talking about 65 I, I know, that but are I'm, I'm conservative. So. Ones I'm, who voted all the time at one time. Yeah, but, but I'm telling him that it's not just his group. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and our age, age range, too, board we're board seeing board. Mike <laughs> is, is, yeah, there's a lot well, of people. This is a captive group. It's the Ham Radio Club. Yeah. And it's a captive group. Every Monday morning, by the way, you're welcome anytime. They're, they're hardcore right wingers, though, is what he's saying. Are. I, I hate they hardcore vote. right wingers. No, I know you are, but you vote, though. They have not voting. But I know a lot of people that don't. Yeah. Yeah. That are hardcore right wingers? Yes. Really? And they're disenfranchised. A lot of people like that, just regular folks in Eastern Oregon. And then running Southern Washington Oregon. County Oath Keepers. Yeah. I was even, I was berated on the radio when I went on there with Stuart Rhodes and Jeff Ford for getting involved in the recall and being too into politics. Stuart was. Let me, let me, we should be involved. Let in me stuff. clarify three I things. That's what I think the whole thing we're missing, whether it's in the work field, whether it's in social, and my brother, I appreciate good everything because you gave me a good candle. We're dealing with the first time in our history, four to five generations that is in the same work field or any environment around. No, there's only about grandmother, grandfather, and the dad, or grandfather, dad, and the son. We're dealing with four to five generations of people in the workforce and inside your own households. The problem is, is the connection from the intellect from what they've been taught in schools. Where in his generation, they, they had to take the test, take a similar test for high school requirement on the history. Just like the American citizens would have to take. My generation, we was taught about 95% of it at, from sixth grade on up. His generation is gone to where they teach only, only everything they else. They did not mm -hmm. teach the founding of our country. They didn't they teach, teach about fringe and recycle. Okay, and then you get to her generation. Oh, here's a few pages on. Here's a week on the Constitution. Here's a, a week on the even that, yeah. or lower than that. And then you get down to Texas. Oh, you're in Texas. That's a whole different world. I got a whole bunch on that. Well, yeah, I got yeah, something else I saw. Into. We were I'm talking about the twenty-five dollar uh, poison. Is a big switch in the politics, Coos County and Curry County. Mm -hmm. Pickup truck driving, gun toting, tobacco spitting rednecks that mm -hmm. always voted Republican. Yes. Until they all lost their jobs. And now because they don't want to lose their goal, they're all becoming yeah. Democrats. Yes. Yeah, I think that and there's a big change going on in Although, you know, now you have, you have a bunch of Coos County Democrats that uh, <laughs> voted, uh, voted, voted, for, spitting. voted for Trump, though. And uh, so, so, um, That's right. yeah, I don't know, the, and the on the dole thing is the wild card there, but uh, yeah, but Kathy McEwen, she's pro gun, yeah. And the thing is, a lot of guys that are that are on the dole, I mean, I've been there, I had to take food stamps to you know get food for my kids for you, know, you gotta eat, you gotta you know? eat, but I think a lot of them, if you gave them the option, hey, here's work that actually pays you 20 bucks now, what you used to they get, and I, you know. And, and got government out of the way yeah. so that kind of the jobs could come back, they'd go back to work because yeah. they enjoy work. Some of them again. would need a little boot to kick them there out the nest. There is some of them that would, yeah. would need a little bit of help yeah. to get going. But most of them, and there's a lot of them, that'd be happy to go back to work. And, and but, you know, even like uh, in DHS, the division that gives out welfare is called the uh, self-sufficiency department. Mm -hmm. And their goal is to make people self-sufficient. So at least, at least on paper, they have that as the as their goal. Okay, what can we do to get you in a better situation? Yeah, yeah. And it's like really well, you know, you're put paying out all this money to all these well, and, people. Well, and part of it though, so that is that like, the current administration or the current party oh, yeah. wants yeah. to keep them there. That's right. like they don't like, want them off. The, the the Medicaid fraud thing that's happening, mm -hmm. where they um, are, uh, where they're um, oh, we don't care if people are eligible for Medicaid. We, um, we'll put them on it anyway, yeah. even if they're not eligible. And so now they have like 50% of the people on there are not eligible. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's expensive. Oh, that's yeah. not like a $10 bill or something no, like that. That's, that's $22 million million dollars a month, people. Yeah. But, and you know what? I spend a lot of money up front on supplements. I can't write any of it off. And I have to pay for other people's yeah, to through my taxes. And just be done. Get rid of all the machinery and yeah, let the market right take now. care of itself. Yeah. What about what about the um, home mortgage interest deduction? I'm sorry, tough shit. Yep, your first home? You know, in, in Canada, they have no home mortgage interest deduction. I'm the first of the fishers of my first line to come from England. 
the original spelling to I'm not I I, I, I do not yet own the property. No. No, you can walk in front of him. No. At, at 38. Hey. How, How can I? You know? Since 1636, which we when we have since oh we founded God. Massachusetts. Uh -huh. Wow. But no, they they the, it's the banks. A lot of it is just incrementally. Pinched the value of our dollar. Well, the situation is there ain't no damn houses worth two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars, and then at no, the same it's time, it's an inflated market. But we're so inflated. It's also, those, everybody needs a house. You move. Everybody needs a house. I've been in the state twenty four years. Okay, and I'm gonna. I'll tell you. I'll throw it out there like a good Lord says. My top end income at one time was probably around thirty one thousand. Okay, top end. Oh, but that came with a lot of headaches. And I start seeing this now. I was paying more, and I'm watching my neighbor across the damn street living better than I am. I'm tired of it. I do. I could do more on 21 to 23 thousand. I pay a 300 and some dollar a month rent. I pay everything else on top of it. That's cheap, but for one room. But the thing is, is you looking at people that get families like yourself, 14 to 17 hundred dollars a month just to rent a damn house. Oh yeah. Uh, and and part of that inflation is when we gone through and gave, under Obama, gave two billion dollars to Catholic Charities, who owns a lot of the lands, a lot of the rentals, and even Yam Hill, Marion, Polk County for damn sure. Yeah. And what you're going to do? You just create an artificial rent demand. You go through on top of that, the doubling under the Obama regime of our utilities. And various mandates and regulations and this and this and this. You have pushed working people that even make fifty to sixty thousand into a hellhole. Yeah, the Obama. And it is meant Europe. to enslave us. It is meant to go through and make us go to government. Oh, we weighed down with the health care costs and our rent and everything else. Please, government, help me. Help me, state government. Help me, Governor Brown. But that's why they want to shock you. It's no different what they did to black communities during the Jim Crow times, yeah. in, even in the northern parts of the states like Chicago or L.A., and there was yeah. disenfranchisement of that nature. And you should look at yeah. that as history and say, look at what these people did. These people gave all their allegiance to the tune of 90% voting power to the Democratic Party. And what did it get them? You know, what did it get them? And the thing is this, we got to be able to come out and, like in your district there, if you're going to, if you decide to choose and go balls on the wall in. I want you, I, and the, the argument that you're going to hear, they're going to go through and try to stereotype you. They're going to probably bring some of these Antifa rats. Oh, I'm ready for But the thing is this, you've got to stand on your principle and say, okay, I am my self-made individual. I did not, I need to lift up a few times, yes. Uh, it's, it couldn't be enough years. See, well, the last time I took it was 2011. Uh, but I 2011, 2011. Like, there was like, nothing but 500 applications, 500 damn applications, 380 of them was done on computer. Before I should have. 15 I just so, so that, 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 that's, 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 that's okay. You know, I, I, had, I had a DUI several years ago and stuff like that, and that came up. But people people get it that, uh, you know, Everybody has Everybody a few makes things. mistakes. Yeah, it's not like uh, last week I was out there doing stuff. I ain't out there going in the Winco buying ribeye steaks and frying ribs by the hoof. Got pregnant and um, we got her on the way. We had to get OHP. Yeah. Well, yeah. otherwise I would have been considered a negligent years, person. Yeah. So that that, that <clears> won't that won't hurt you. Though. Well, the no, thing is, not. you just put it out. Look, the, that's how the system yeah. was intended to be used. It was well, intended to help somebody for a short period of time, yeah. when, and I don't have necessarily have a problem with no. that. I'd rather you're, see it be a you're private. You're supposed to run for office in your thirties to find out what you did in your twenties. Yeah, <laughs> but it, you know, it's like I'd, I'd rather it be a, a private charity system, sure. Yeah. But the church is used to carry that, right? But I don't have a problem yeah, with the government having net. a small controlled program to help people. Net. But I don't want a Jesse Jackson program like uh, but, <laughs> Rainbow Coalition you know, yeah, get 300000 now that are there on it long term. And that's not what it was designed for. But we have to have the bureaucrats lose some money here and there, you know, yeah. to make it legitimate. <laughs> I think the big argument would be how much outside the food. Come in there, you're going to be testifying. I want you to have an organ. Or if you're going to come in on behalf of a senator from out of state to speak on for this issue, I want... 
Prozanski's, I want whatever. Or you know how they say, uh, do you live within, I think it's 50 or 100 miles of yeah. the capital, right? Because mm -hmm. I want to get the, the rural people, the people that came from a long well, ways off, I, I, a chance first, right? Yeah. So same thing too, are you an Oregon resident? And yeah. that, so they say, oh, you're from Nebraska and you're here to testify. We don't want to cut you out of the debate or anything like that. But, but go to the back. We're going to let Bob go first. But it's just yeah. like, yeah. I was working down in Roseburg and three of them, three of the hearings. I'm working down that way with them for whoever. And I'm rushing my ass up here. And I got up here in, in the shutdown week. All of a sudden, one hour notice, boom. Yeah. All that hearing coming. That's Barbara Streisand. There was, ooh, I wanted to blow somebody up. That's when I met Julie. She's funny. That was a good one, but the, the, on that committee, there was only one Republican sitting up there for that well, day because, because there's uh, three others that, absent. Not that Boone was sick, and the other one. Beretta was there. <laughs> Right, that doesn't matter though. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because, yeah. I mean, I was at the 1921 so testifying. Yeah, I remember that. And, and but it was the thing that got me too. there, you know, in full disclosure here, I'm I'm an NRA member. I'm an NRA instructor. Yeah. And and what really kind of chapped me was Przanski, when the NRA representative, he lives in Northern California, and when he got up to testify as a representative of myself and, and several I was people called between him and a newspaper article. Oh. <laughs> and, and, and he's like, well, where do you live? And, and he got a bunch of snickering when he said Northern California. He, well, you're not even from this state. Well, it's, th but, that's not the point. He's there representing an industry, you know, and a bunch of consumers. You know, and, and so he wasn't there testifying as, as some that's on the disenfranchisement on YouTube. Yeah, that's, 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 he's, that's, yeah. he's just a lobbyist for NRA. But, um, right. But yeah. and Kevin Sterrett's there all the time. I mean, right. I'm sitting between both of them and I'm pointing here. Yeah, yeah, okay. I wonder when the Enviros it's are up there, if they uh, have their people from They had, food. they had, what's her name, the... the Penny Akamoto was there. No, 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 the, they had the, the lady... Oh, the Charleston shot. lady. The lady, the, the mother... From the church in South Carolina. Well, there. but they also had the astronaut's wife that got shot. Oh, you got my name. The walking Pinocchio, yeah. Whatever her name is. Gifford. She was there. Gifford. That's what I she, she, she got to testify, and there wasn't any of this, well, where do you live? You hey, Ron, you're going to have to be a little bit more colorful in your descriptions, or we're not going to have you back anymore. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure I do better. So. But, yeah, I, I totally agree. I think if, if people are there to testify, the, the Oregonian, the residents, ought to get first crack. Or, or we just point out the people who aren't residents, but that, that's just interesting. It, should just, it needs to be highlighted and brought out. Yeah. I mean, well, because that's, that's And why. it needs to be done equally. And so, sure. um, so yeah, we're going to beat up on the NRA guy because well, he lives in California. Now we're, now we're talking oh, about the Enviros. So, we're going to beat up on them. Yeah. But, but yeah. I mean, that's, that's why we don't we're have talking about disenfranchising. Right. No, no, there was a, I didn't get a chance to testify that day because there were so many people in front of me, and most of the people I watched testify weren't from the state. Yeah. And, but, and so, well, they flood. They did the same thing in Lumpur. Well, they did the same thing they, in Phoenix. They, they did the same thing in Look lot. what's happened in, Ve in Nevada. Because what happens, Same usual suspects. That's why the Give Oregonian the money, residents nice don't want to show up at that building to testify. Okay. Because if it's a gun topic, if it's a hot button topic, they know they're not going to get a chance. They're going to waste their whole day driving, taking a day off work. Yeah. So there's a couple hundred dollars down the tube for most people, you know, and and an age so well, with with the testimony though, I, so I, I don't I don't want to I don't want to go too far with this, but I gotta okay, say good. that it's it's not so much important that every single person get heard. It's important that every single point of view gets heard, 